Good day everyone! Today's topic, we will be discussing the fundamentals of local area network or LAN and wide area network or WAN. Here are the list of topics that we will be covering in this video. Let us first define what network is. A network is a collection of two or more computers that can share resources such as data, a printer, an internet connection, an application, or a combination of this. There are five different uh, computer networks. Let us discuss them one by one or elements of computer networks. Let us discuss them one by one. The first one is the end uh, devices. Now, the end devices communicate with one another and exchange knowledge or resources in a computer network. A computer, a, ser a server, or a mobile phone are examples of end devices. These end devices are typically used for computer network users. The next element is medium. Now, medium are the end devices are connected to each other uh, through a medium in order to send and receive data. A cable or a wireless transceiver may be used to connect the two end devices. The next element is the network devices. Network devices are devices that are mounted between end devices to accurately uh, route information or data between them. Now, switches and routers are popular uh, network devices or popular examples of network devices. Next, we have messages. Now, messages are the information or data sent by end devices and transmitted over the medium and is transferred to as a message. And lastly, the last element is rules. The flow of messages through the entire network is regulated by rules. Now, rules, examples of rules are the protocols that we have discussed last uh, meeting like the uh, internet protocol and the uh, transmission control protocol. We also have the file transfer protocol. So those are examples of uh, rules that are being implemented when sending and receiving messages. Now, there are common physical components of a network. Now, these physical components can be categorized into four major uh, types. These are the personal computers, the interconnections, the switches, and the routers. Now, let us discuss them one by one. First is the personal computers or PCs. A computer network's endpoints are PCs or personal computers. In a network, computers are in charge of sending and receiving data or information. The second component is the interconnections. Now, interconnections have has uh, three sub uh, components, which are the network interface card, the network media, and the connectors. Now, let us define first interconnections. Now, interconnections are the components in a network that are responsible for transporting data from one point to another. The following are the three forms of interconnections. The first one is the network interface card or the NIC. Now, NIC converts the information produced by the device into a format that can be sent over a local network. Now, the media or the network media transmits the data signals formatted by the network interface card from one network computer to another. Network media may include cables or wireless transceivers. The third one is the connectors. Connectors now provides the connection point for the media or the network media okay so think of the connectors as as uh, that is like a or an outlet 
Okay? Wherein you plug in your uh, uh, appliances. Okay? Next, okay, the third one, the third component is the switches. Okay? Any computer on a network is normally linked to a network switch to communicate with other computers, which means that network switch is the network attachment point to the end devices. Okay? Within the local network, the network switch intelligently switches data. And last component is the routers. One of the most essential components of a computer network is the router. Now, the router is a device that stores network information and links various networks. It also selects the most efficient data transmission route between networks. Okay, so that is an example or that is a router. Now, here are the advantages of a computer network. First, we have... Okay, so if we set up a computer network, we would be able to take advantage of the following benefits, okay, or advantages, okay. First is file sharing. So any computer on a network can share files with other computers. As a result, you can access or alter or even copy files stored to other computers on the network just as easy as if they were stored in your computer by sharing files. Next is resource sharing. Okay. Now, inside the computer network, it is also possible to share network resources such as printers, fax machines, storage uh, devices like the uh, DVD drives, okay, webcams, scanners, modems, and many other devices. Third is, or third advantage is the program sharing. Okay, different programs can be shared in a computer network in the same way as files can be shared. For instance, if you have the appropriate software license such as an antivirus and keep it on the network server, it will run on all network computers. Last advantage is communication. You can make an audio or video call and connect with other uh, devices by setting up a computer network. Just like what you experience when you are creating or when you are doing video calls. Okay, we now go to the local area network and the wide area network. Now, there are different types of computers or components or types of uh, computer networks. Okay, we have the LAN, okay, the local area network. We have the WAN. We have the MAN or short for Metropolitan Area Network. Okay, now uh, the MAN refers to network that connects cities. Okay, it's a it's a hybrid network that combines the benefits of both LAN and WAN. Okay, combination of LAN and WAN. Multiple LANs are available in a MAN, but they are not put over long distances. So, short distance lang. Okay, also, there is at least one WAN relation. In an ISP network, uh, sorry, an ISP network is a simple example of a MAN. Next, we have the SAN or the Storage Area Network. Okay, let me move the screen. Okay. Now, uh, Storage Area Network is an acronym for Storage Area Network, as I have said. Now, it offers a high-speed infrastructure for moving data between physical servers and storage devices. Okay, the storage in a SAN... Okay, provides virtual uh, HDD to the servers and the servers read and write to the disk over the network. Now, HDD is the hard disk drive, okay? So, here is an illustration of the uh, four types of networks, okay? So, we have the area wide area network, okay? And then we have the Metropolitan Area Network. We have the Local Area Network. Of course, the uh, SAN is not uh, 
uh, shown here because uh, we, we are making use of a storage devices like uh, the hard disk drive. Okay, now there are different physical uh, media types to be used when connecting the following networks. So when you're connecting one, LAN, uh, or MAN, okay, we make use of these different media types. Okay, the first is uh, the twisted pair. Okay, sometimes you can refer to it as the UTP cable. Okay, the second is the coaxial cable. Like the one we are using in our uh, uh, TV television, okay. That kind that is the kind of cable that is uh, used, okay, for for TVs, for example, and is also used for connecting networks, okay. And number four, we have the fiber optics, okay, which is uh, one of the newest technology, okay, in terms of physical media, okay. Maybe you have uh, seen uh, the fiber, uh, a fiber optic cable, okay? It is used for fast internet connections. And I did include here is the the fourth one, which is the uh, no, this is the, uh, the uh, wireless, okay? Wireless connection as a part of the physical media. Or what you known as the... Wi-Fi as the Wi-Fi. Now, here are the physical media comparisons. Okay, for each physical media types in terms of bandwidth, distance, and uh, price. Okay, for twisted pair, okay, the bandwidth is when you say bandwidth, it is the how many uh, or how fast can you transmit packets over a network given a time, okay? So, for a twisted pair, since it is a short distance connection, okay, as you can see, you can reach uh, your bandwidth up to 1 gigabits per second. Okay, for ax, uh, coax, you have 10 to 100 Mbps only. For fiber optics, okay, you can reach up to 10 Gbps, Okay. And for wireless area network, we have 54 Mbps. Now, it this will still depend on the uh, internet service provider that you are using. Okay. Next, we have the distance. As you can see, okay, uh, the twisted pair is the shortest network connection here. Okay, because you are using a cable wire when connecting computer networks. Okay. And then, as you can see, the uh, fiber optics is the longest or has the longest distance, which can reach up to 60 kilometers. Okay. Now, in terms of price, okay, so the most expensive here is, of course, the fiber, fiber optic cable, while the uh, least expensive is the twisted pair. Uh, you can buy a twisted pair for... As much as 150 pesos. It depends on the uh, length okay, of the uh, twisted pair that you are buying. The next slide is about uh, MAC address. Okay, let's go to MAC address. Okay, so why is MAC address important? So MAC address is important to know. Okay, because it is used to ensure that messages being sent over the network is received by the correct recipient. Okay, so the hardware address or the MAC address, also known as the network inter sorry, the hardware address, also known as the network interface card address, is protocol independent and is normally allocated at the factory. Since it is located on the MAC sublayer of the data link layer, which is the second layer in the OSI, okay, if you remember, this address is known as the Media Access Control Address or the MAC address. Think of your MAC address as your fingerprint. Now, each computer 
has a unique MAC address. There is no uh, same MAC address in a computer ne in computer networks. All of the computers has a distinct or has a unique MAC address. This is uh, an, uh, a security feature that ensures that your message uh, being sent over the network will will reach okay your destination the destination. We now go to local area network. Okay, so a local area network, also known as a LAN, or a group of computers that are physically connected to the same hub, switch, or group of interconnected switches. Okay, LAN are set up such that an that. Uh, such that a computer on the network can send a broadcast message that can be seen by all other devices on the network. Now, broadcast domains are a term used to describe LANs. So, how does LAN works? Okay. To uh, completely comprehend the internet, the, sorry, the Ethernet protocol, you must have a working knowledge of computer science. Now, here is a straightforward explanation of how uh, local area network Ethernet works. Okay, I hope you understand this. Okay, so when a computer, when a network computer needs to transmit data to another, it looks for the carrier, okay, which is the main wire that connects the machine. Now, then, it sends the data packet, okay, on the network. If it is free, which means that no one else is transmitting anything, and the other devices search the packets to see if they are received. Now, the packets is consumed by the receiver. If there, if there is a packet on the highway, the computer that wants to submit waits a few thousands of a second before trying again. So, as, as if you can see, okay, once it is being sent to the receiver, okay, a protocol checks whether the packets being received are complete and correct. Okay, otherwise, if it is not complete or correct, it will wait for a thousandth of a second, okay, and then it will ask if there is a failure of transmission, okay, the receiver will ask or a protocol will be will be uh, deployed to ask for a reason of packets over the network until such time that all the packets are being received correctly and completely. Okay, now what is a wide area network? Okay, so a wide area network is a set of interconnected local area networks or other networks. Okay, one or not constrained to the same geographic area as LAN. So it has a wider okay, range compared to local area network. A wide area network is basically a set of networks with the internet uh, serving as the world's li largest uh, area network or network. Okay, so here are the advantages and disadvantages of one. Okay, so for the advantages we have, can cover a large geographical area. Okay, second, centralized infrastructure. So each, uh, as, as, as men mentioned earlier, one is composed of multiple lo uh, local area networks. That is why it is, centralized, it is a centralized infrastructure. Okay. Next is security. Okay. The fourth is the increased bandwidth with the use of least lines as opposed to broadband connections. So these lines like your ISP or the internet, your internet service providers. Okay. Next we go to the disadvantages of one. So high setup cost. Okay, as you can see, if you will be using a fiber optic type of connection or media. Okay, in con for your connection, it will cost you much higher. Okay, uh, next is the possibility of security gaps. Okay, and lastly, needs antivirus software and firewalls. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of a one. And that concludes this topic. Thanks for listening.